how to draw a realistic eye, that's what I'm going to show you in this video and anyone can do it. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, you'll find all things watercolour as well as draw intuition, mixed media, even some business and motivation too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So drawing eyes has been popular since the beginning of time. The Egyptians even incorporated them into their hieroglyphics and that's a very difficult word to say when you're wearing a brace, having so much trouble talking these days. So we're gonna look at drawing a realistic eye today. Now I've been teaching painting and drawing for over 20 years here in the south of England and up until the beginning of the pandemic, which obviously put somewhat paid to uh, the art classes I was teaching, I was teaching regularly. I've taught thousands and thousands of students. So I see what people do wrong and I know what people do wrong when they're drawing faces and in particular drawing eyes. So I'm gonna take you through each stage of drawing the eye today. And we're gonna look at some of the mistakes that people most commonly make so that we can fix them and get that really realistic looking eye. Because when you draw an eye, it can end up looking quite flat, a bit like those Egyptian eyes where they were just simple outlines. We need to consider actually the curve of the skull and the curve of the eye. And once you get all of that shading in place, your eye will start to look a lot more realistic. So I'm gonna point the camera downwards. And first of all, we'll have a look at materials so that if you're new to drawing, you'll know exactly what to choose to get the best results from your drawing and sketching. So let's look at the materials that I'm using today. I've got a piece of Frisk cartridge paper now. If you're in the US and the term cartridge paper is not usual to you, um, it's what we in the UK use to describe a high quality drawing or sketch paper. So it's not watercolour paper, but it's not thin and flimsy like printer paper would be. It's not overly smooth, it's just right for drawing. So if you've got a sketch pad, this is the sort of paper that you will have. It's just that in the UK, we call it cartridge paper. Now it's important that you're not using paper that's too smooth because you won't see the marks properly. You won't be able to get any darks if your paper is too smooth because it doesn't have enough tooth to grab the graphite. If you use a watercolor paper, you're going to find that that is too bumpy and you won't be able to get any smooth shading. So do make sure you've got some nice sketching paper ready. I've got some pencils, obviously. Um, I've got here, this is the darkest one that I've got. Most brands go up to an eight or nine B. You want to be looking at using B grade pencils. Now, if you've only got something like an HB, what you can do is you can follow along with the shape of the eye, but you'll never get the, uh, the shading done well because it's just too hard and too light. You wanna be looking at the B grades. Don't go anywhere near the age grades, they're just too hard. They're far more suitable for plotting things out and for writing. I've also got a 4B and a 2B. Now the difference is that the uh, the higher the number, the softer and blacker it will be. So this one, this 8B will be good for getting very black marks, but it might be a bit messy for doing the initial outline. So I'll use some of these other grades for doing finer work and for doing outlines, and then I'll go up to the 8B where I really want some strong darks. I've also got a little bit of um, eraser here. Uh, this is a bit of putty eraser. So this is the, um, I've just bought one so you can see the box. This is the Dela Roni Firm Putty and this is the one that I prefer. If you are into doing sort of um, hyper-realistic work, then one of those mechanical erasers that look like a pen and, um, you know, vibrate can be very, very useful for you. I don't tend to do a lot of drawing for the sake of drawing itself, so I don't need one of those, but you can use those. I don't actually like the very, very soft putty rubbers, the ones that tend to be blue and look a bit like blue tack that you hang things on the walls with. I find they get very mucky and dirty and um, I don't actually like to knead my eraser because it just puts all that muck on the inside or gets it back onto your hands. But it's a matter of personal preference, really. You can choose the sort of eraser that uh, works best for you. I would avoid a very, very hard eraser. They tend to damage the paper. Now, I have taped my paper to this board and I've got actually a few other sheets of paper underneath because I don't want the grain of the board. I've got cutting marks on this board. I don't want that showing through the final finished drawing. You can end up with almost like a wax rubbings effect if you ever went out and sort of did wax rubbing with crayons um, at school to get various textures or on gravestones or anything like that. You can end up with the same effect but if you've got a pad of paper you'll be fine but if you're using a board like this 
good idea to put a few more smooth sheets underneath so you don't get either the uh, the grain of the wood or any scuff and scratch marks showing through onto your final drawing. And I've got my uh, my favourite pencil sharpener, which is one of these Helix barrel pencil sharpeners. It's the one that I've found the best through the years. And I've also got a, a set square. You can use a ruler. We won't be using this much. We're not going to be measuring much, but it can just be useful for checking angles. So I've got one of these as well. And I'm ready to start my drawing. The only other thing I need is a photograph. So here's the first one I printed off. Um, and this is from a popular, well-known website where you can get copyright free photographs. And I'll put details of the site and the photographer in the video description. So you can go and grab the same photograph if you want to. It was actually stylized. It had a big circle around it, but um, I just cropped it down. Now this was, as I said, the first one I printed. I thought it came out rather too light. My printer is always printing too dark, so we tend to lighten. And um, in the end, it was quite a light photograph. Anyway, in the end, I got this dark one, which I like better. I'll be working from this one, but you can see how useful it is sometimes to print more than one because I've actually got a lot more detail in the iris here than I've got in this darker one. But I like the darker one better as regards the shading because it's a bit overexposed in other places. So I'll be using this photograph or these photographs in order to do my drawing. And I'm just putting the camera back on briefly because I forgot to tell you about my blending tools. So I've got a couple of blending tools here. I've got this, which is a paper stump called a torsion. I've also got this, which is a, uh, a little brush. So this is just a little old acrylic brush and I'll be able to blend the pencil with that. You can use your fingers, but I don't recommend it because of the oil in your fingers. What you can do if you don't have any of these things is you can get a piece of paper tissue like this, wrap your finger around it and use that. You can also use a cotton wool bud. There are various things that you can use to blend with. Try to keep your fingers off of the paper as much as possible though because of the oil. And now we'll get on with the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to look at with our drawing is the shape of the eye. So let's start with the outline shape and uh, the main mistake that people make with this, I'll just uh, sketch one roughly on this scrap of paper, is that People tend to make the eye too oval, so they make it this kind of shape. It's very symmetrical, it's very pointed, and it doesn't have enough of a tear duct. In reality, eyes tend to be far more curved on the top edge than the bottom edge, so the reality is sometimes more like this, and then flatter at the base with more of a tear duct shape here. Now, this shape varies hugely depending on the age of the person. That's what has the most effect on it and also the race and just generally the, uh, you know, the genetics of each individual person being completely different from another person. But you will find that as a person ages, then they have much more of a narrow eye because you often find that the eyelid sags and it can even in a very elderly person come over and cut off part of the eye like this. So it's a matter of careful observation. The other thing is that there is sometimes an angle to the eye itself. Now the, the actual eye, you know, the, uh, the ball of the eye, is an orb. But the outside slit that you can see the eye through, the gap in the skin, sometimes is at an angle. Again, this can be a matter of race, but it's also a matter of um, how each person looks. And there's often an upward tilt to the outside of the eye. So what you can often have is if you imagine a, uh, an angle through like this, you can often have the eye being more round and angle like that rather than straight. So this part here may not be on the same line as this part here if you were to put a straight line through. So we're actually going to do that. We're going to look at the angle of the eye and see if there's any, uh, any difference between the level of this part and the level of that part. So let's start now. So in order to judge any angles on this, I need to have some way of anchoring this to my paper. I'm not gonna physically stick it down, but what I'm going to do is line it up with the edge of the paper. So I can line it up here, I could line it up at the base or even at the side. I'm just gonna put it towards the side of my board at the moment. And the first thing you can do, the easiest way of checking an angle is just to put, you know, a straight line through it. So I'm going here from the point of the tear duct to the point of the corner of the eye. And um, I think you can see there's a slight angle on this. So that's what we want to get in place. I'm going to draw a bit of a guideline. So I'm going to now take this and extend it by um, taking a line like that. Now angles don't change regardless of size. So I can start to get a bit of that 
angle here using my ruler and then I can continue it. I'm going to draw this very, very lightly and if you're drawing your own, you want to do it so lightly that you can barely see it. I have to go a little bit darker on YouTube so that you can see what I'm doing. But here we have an angle through the eye, which we now know is exactly the right angle. I'm also now going to start to draw the eye itself. And again, I want to get my photograph back and I'm going to start thinking about how big I want the eye. So let's think about having it um, so it comes to here and perhaps up to here and we'll start putting the eye in from there. And let's have a look at the shape of the eye. This person appears to be fairly young, maybe 20s or 30s, so that they've got only a few fine lines around the eye itself. So I'm looking here at the shape and we've got that teared up shape there coming up like this. Now youth is associated with symmetry and therefore with beauty. And so the younger the person is, the more symmetrical the eye will be. And if you look at that line that we took across the eye, you'll see that there's um, slightly less underneath than there is at the top. And that is because, as I mentioned before, the, um, the lower part of the eye tends to be flatter than the upper part, which tends to be more curved. So we're coming round like this, coming here. Now, I'm not sure at the moment that that's correct. So what I can do is I can take another measurement. I can look at the height of the gap here compared to the width, and I can do that just with my pencil. So I'm going to take a little mark here, put my fingernail there, and then we'll see how many times that goes into the length. This is um, an approximation. We've got sort of probably two and a third. So I want to see that the height of my eye goes into the width two and a third. So again, we'll go here. So one, two, and a bit. It may need to be a little bit longer. I think it's not far off. So I'm gonna come down here, and I think we'll just make that a bit longer there and come up like this. This is only a starting point for the eye. It may be that I adjust it later on. I just want to get that tear duct coming downwards a bit more actually, I think. And what I'll do now is I'll just erase any lines that I no longer need, including this angle, this construction line. Now, when people go on to put the brow in, often they just place it somewhere above the eye, you know, where they think it's possibly in the right position. But unless you take into account the actual shape of the eye socket and the way that the brow relates to the nose and the eye, even if you're not drawing the nose, it's going to make a huge difference to how realistic your eye starts to look. So the next thing I need to do is consider the placement of the brow. This is where people tend to go wrong. They tend to just get their eye, so they've drawn their eye, and then they're just going to sort of think, well, it's about here, and they place their eyebrow on. But they're missing the fact that the, uh, the eyebrow is the topmost part of the eye socket. So you need to get the fact that it's on that bone there, and you need to get the shading, and you need to get the shape of the entire socket, even if you're just drawing the eye like we are today. So let's look again at our picture. And you see how the hair here that starts on the brow comes from the edge of the nose here. So we want to get an indication of that shape there. You know, even if we're not much putting it in this picture, we need to get an indication of the shape of that and start looking at how that comes up and it's got a straightness to it. I believe this is a male eye. It's quite hard to tell actually. It could be a woman but the uh, the strength of the brow makes me think that it's possibly a man but um, for the purpose of this uh, this tutorial it doesn't matter too much. Now we need to figure out where the topmost point of that uh, brow bone comes to before it starts to slope down. So what we can do here is just take a straight line up and see what part of the eye it's in line with. It's almost in line with the end there. It's just a little way in from the edge. So this is one thing. We haven't got a lot of indicators to show us where to put the brow, but we can, uh, we can certainly get an idea that that brow comes up here and then comes down here. And I'm not going to draw the brow at the moment. I'm just getting a rough idea of the placement of it within that eye socket. And I can also look at how far down that those brow hairs come to. So at this point, rather than draw the brow in, I'm going to start drawing in the details of the upper fold of the eyelid. And then I'm going to start putting shading in this whole area. 
So using the eye that I've already drawn as a guideline, we're going to start getting in that curve of the lid coming around there. And this is something that is more pronounced on um, some people than other people. It flattens off slightly here. That also, as I said, is a sign of age because as we age, that top part of the lid will start to droop down and make it less of an almond shape. And then we've got a little bit here. Make it sound like this person's 100 years old, don't I? They're probably only in their 20s or 30s. Let's go around like this. And we've got a slight bit of lining under the eyes here, so we can just start to indicate very lightly where that goes. It's really important at this stage that you don't put strong, hard lines. And the younger the person is, the more you have to be careful with this. Um, it's very easy, for instance, if you're drawing a child, to put um, so many lines in, because you start seeing all these lines and shadows. You start to put so much of that stuff in that you actually lose the youth of the person. So the younger the person is, the lighter you need to keep those lines. And what I'm going to do now is start to add shading. I'm going to be using the flat of my pencil. So I'll be shading like this as lightly as I possibly can. I can also cross hatch. There will be a little bit of graininess to the paper. And this is um, necessary because if the paper was too smooth, you simply wouldn't get a dark mark because it wouldn't grab the graphite. So I'm going to start working in now and start shading in areas where I see shadow and just keep looking and looking at my picture. It doesn't look like an eye much at the moment because we haven't got the iris in or the pupil, but that really is by the by. This is the most important part, is getting this socket to be the right shape and getting the shading correct. If you don't have that, then nothing is going to look realistic. So people often skip ahead just doing the outside shape. But what we need to do is to start concentrating on the shading here. And I'll also, as I'm shading like this, I will also start to blend. So I've got my brush here and I can start blending like this and getting a bit more smoothness to it. And I'm going to just keep building up the shading and the shadows anywhere that I see. If I feel I need to adjust anything, for instance, at the moment I'm feeling like there's perhaps not too much of a gap there, I can always take that brow a little higher up or adjust the shape of this eyelid as I'm putting the shading. There's something about doing this shading and detail that's going to make it become apparent if there's any parts of the drawing that aren't quite right at this stage. Now, we're not going for an absolutely portrait style recognisable person here. We're just going for an eye that looks realistic today. So I'm not going to obsess for hours about the um, exact likeness, but I'm just going to start working in and gradually building up that shading. Try to just use the, um, the edge of your pencil as much as you can. We're going to be using the point of the pencil to do things that are much more formal, like eyelashes, much harder edge things. But for now, I just want you to use this part of your pencil and start bringing in that shading. At every stage, ask yourself what is lighter and what is darker. Don't worry about doing any shading within the eye yet. We'll be doing that later on. For now, I just want you to think about where your areas of shadow are and get them in like so. You can also, if you want to, put a little bit of detail in things like fine lines. We've got some fine lines here, but I would advise you to do the underneath shading first and then put the lines on top very lightly indeed. So you can see that I'm building up the shadow here and I've got almost some shading over the whole thing and I've now changed to a, uh, a softer and blacker pencil. So this is my 8B and I'm coming along here and all the time asking myself, you know, which bit is lighter, which bit is darker and we've got a lot of dark in here. Another thing that I can do if I want to is I can use my eraser to lift out a highlight. If there's any area where I feel I've gone too dark, I can just use that eraser and I can just lift out a highlight like so. I'm going to keep building up this shading and I'm going to keep smoothing it out until I'm happy with it and getting those dark lines and those details on. It's this underneath shape that's going to make our eye look realistic. So I'm continuing to build up areas of shading. Now, one thing to be aware of, if you're using a blending tool like this or even your finger, then be careful because what happens is you start to flatten the grain of the paper. So it's important to keep 
your pressure fairly light at this stage and any time that you press hard and press hard even with the pencil you will again flatten the grain of the paper that means it can't take any more pencil and also you'll find it harder to erase and to get more layers on top so I'm just blending very gently a brush um, makes it much less likely for that to happen so you can also use your brush for blending what this is doing is it's just pushing the pencil into the uh, into all the little dips that it doesn't naturally go into and I'm talking about tiny dips that your eye can barely see and I'm just going to continue blending and building up where I need a harder line and I started to need a slightly harder edge here I actually changed that back down to my 2B pencil and I'll get a much sharper line with that but be careful that uh, you know exactly where you want that before you go into that stage as i said the harder you press the harder it will be to remove mistakes i'm going to continue to build up here i'm also going to use my eraser to lift out any highlights and also to put any of these little wrinkles in if you're going for a hugely photorealistic effect you would actually be looking at each wrinkle as it were and putting in little eraser highlights for which you would need a sharper point in your eraser so we're not going for photorealism here we're just going for a very realistic effect so i'll be fine to use this little bit of eraser here so i'm continuing now to put in eraser highlights and also some of these tiny fine lines and the combination of the eraser highlights and the fine lines will help to give it that realistic look underneath the eye and don't worry if you erase anything that you want to keep you can always put it back in and I'm actually using a very fine point here and this is my 4B pencil any fine line pencil will do at this stage I'm just getting the idea you can see lots of tiny lines here but they are very very faint so we're just going to put those in where we see them from observation now we're going to look at the shape of the iris and the pupil and if there's any highlight on the eye this is where a lot of people go wrong and it can really make your person look very very surprised indeed or as if they take an awful lot of drugs if you get this bit wrong so i'm quite happy with that so far let me show you the mistake that people often make when they put the iris in. So if you have your eye shape like this, and we'll just imagine an eye shape like so, what people sometimes do is put a circle in here. Now the problem with putting a circle in is that it's not realistic. Unless someone is incredibly surprised, you won't see all of the circle like that. What you'll see is that the, um, the top and sometimes the bottom lid as well will cover up slightly so your eye lid comes over like this and what you'll find is that you've got part of that circle on show only then as far as the pupils go it's a matter of just observation and seeing how big they are in the picture again don't make them too big because large pupils are generally um, seen at night so if you go too far with this, if you make the pupil too large and if you make the iris too round, what will happen is your person will either look like they're in shock, it'll look like you're viewing them at night under a bright light or it'll look like they're on drugs. None of those are particularly useful. Now, you will also find often in an eye, you'll find a highlight. Now, if you can't see the highlight, don't put it in in your picture because it may be that the light is just not enough to reflect off of the pupil or the iris or that the, uh, the eye itself is in shadow. But if you have got the eye in good light, what you'll find is a highlight. And this is because the eye is very shiny. Now, the way to make something look shiny is to do a hard edged highlight. This one here is quite interesting. We've almost got a sort of a double effect. You can see a bit of a light in there and you can see a reflection of the eyelashes as well, which is making it a very interesting shape. So I'll be drawing that highlight in and leaving it clean white paper as I work into the rest. So let's get on and sketch our iris into our picture. So again, I'm going to be using my photograph as a guideline and it's fairly central. Let's have a look and we can just start to get that in think a little bit further around perhaps just play around with it until it looks like it's in the right place and doing the right thing you can see most of the bottom it's just touching there so i'm going to keep that fairly curved and then we've got the top coming up like this 
So I'll erase any lines I don't need. Now the white of the eye itself is not pure white. There will be some shading on this area. We're going to do that in a little while and we'll get that tear duct into. But for now we're going to concentrate on this centre part here. I'm also going to look at where the, uh, the pupil is and how big it is. And I think we're looking at something like this. I want to get that highlight in as well. And the highlight on this eye is actually outside of the black part, but it could be anywhere really. So it'll just be a matter of the individual lighting in your picture. And we can get the shape of it here. And then we've got those kind of eyelash shapes coming down into it. And you want to outline that highlight, but not too harshly because you don't want in the end, you don't want it to look like it's got an outline, but you do need to outline it slightly so that you can see where not to shade as you're working. So next we're going to shade the pupil and the iris and this is where it's important to have that soft pencil so that you get those real strong darks which are going to contrast with the highlight on your eye. And the next stage is to put all of the detail in this, uh, in this eye. So the, the centre part here is going to be really black so I'm going to make sure I've got this nice and circular. I'll take a, uh, a harder pencil around the edge so that I get a real distinct line there. And then I'll use the softer pencil, the blacker pencil, to fill in. And I'll also start putting some shading around the outside of the eye. How hard edged this outside iris part depends from person to person. Some people have very clear eyes, some people it may be a little softer, especially if they're a little bit older. So I'm going to start now shading in. Then as I come out and shade out the colours of the iris, uh, because we're working in black and white, we need to consider if you've got yellow and green, you need to think which one is lighter or darker. The best way to do that is to squint your eyes and just to have a look and to see if one looks darker than the other. Try to ignore the colour in this case. If you're really stuck with it and you're working in black and white, you could print your picture in black and white and that will help you to see the tones much more clearly. But for now, I'm going to just work in by eye and starting to get that real dark in the middle. This is why you need a soft pencil because you simply won't get a hard pencil, particularly black. I also want to get rid of any lightness in there. So again, I'll be using this torsion to blend and blend and blend. And that will push the graphite in to all the little dips in the paper so that we get a flat black area. So important when shading this part of the eye to go in the direction that the, uh, the lines come out from the centre of the eye, there's kind of a starburst effect in eyes. Same when you're doing anything like eyelashes, always do them in the direction they go, rather than trying to sort of um, adjust it afterwards and get it looking right. So at the moment I'm just taking out some rough shapes like this, I've got the highlight done so I'm reserving that and then I'm shading in slightly lighter towards the edges here just going to build up at the top of the eye around here it goes almost as dark as the pupil itself so don't worry about going dark there and I'm just going to take some more shading out here and then I'll start to blend and I'll also start to put in any details that I see on the shading where there are little lines and marks within the iris itself so do take your time over this bit so that you get it just right so you can see that i'm almost complete on this part the top of this iris will be a lot darker than the base because it's in shadow from the lid and we're going around here and there are also lots of little markings that we can get in here and this impression that this center part here is a bit darker and it's a bit lighter as it comes around the edge if you go too dark with it, you can, of course, again, take out some little bits of highlights as you come around the bottom here. Try not to make any of this too hard edged though. And there are some lines that go in the other direction as well that go almost around the outside like this. I may adjust that a little further later on, but for now, I'm happy with that. So let's look now at drawing the brow in. Now, notwithstanding the fact that some ladies like to give themselves very, very unrealistic eyebrows these days, looks at my own eyebrows, I hope they're okay. But we're going to go for quite a natural look in this drawing. So we have more shading to do within the eye, but at this stage, I'm going to put the eyebrow in. Now, the mistake people often make with eyebrows is not to get the, uh, the little strokes going in the direction that they grow. So, if you notice, as I take my pencil off of the paper, 
it tapers so you never want to be you know doing eyebrows in the wrong direction like that you always want to taper them outwards also when hair grows it naturally takes a different direction now and again so you want to get that natural look to it so root to tip little strokes like this and they occasionally cross and go in different directions and that's how we're going to do our brow hair i have got a 2b here i'm going to change to a 4b i want a sharp pencil but i need a lot of black as well the 8b would be too soft so let's go here and i'm going to start working now i am right-handed so it's quite awkward for me to go in this direction should have perhaps thought of that before I could also turn my paper around and work upside down which after I switch the camera off and continue filming this part I probably will do because it's just easier for me so looking at where the eyebrow starts they tend to start if you have ever followed a uh, beauty tutorial if you're a female you've followed a beauty tutorial you're often told to go from here to here if drawing eyebrow hairs in and you can see that that's a good indication there to take that line across. So we can do that on our eye as well and start with our eyebrow hairs somewhere around here. And I'll just start by making a little mark and we'll just start working forward from there and being very aware of looking at them carefully and you know how long are they they tend to be shorter here the brow hairs are longer much further round and just following that shape I don't really have a line in anymore but I do have sort of a shape from the shading and we left this part free of shading because it was quite light and I'm just going to continue working round and you'll notice that the hairs physically grow in different directions these ones come up these ones come down and are longer and i'm just going to keep working around and building up in order to get this depth in here i'm not going to do any smudging or any shading if you had a lady who had um, eyeliner on or the eyebrow pencil then you could do that certainly but this person here has natural brows and so the thickness the blackness in the middle will just be built up by depth of strokes and by a lot of strokes in the middle. So really happy with that brow. I am doing, um, despite saying I wouldn't do any smudging, I'm doing a little just because, not because I want to smudge the hairs in, but just because there is a little bit of shadow in places, especially at this edge here. And it just takes away that stark whiteness. It's quite white over here, but um, over towards this inner corner, as you would expect, by the side of the nose there's a little bit more shadow so not going to overdo that however so before we get the lashes in we want to make sure that we've got all of the other details including that little bit in the corner those tear ducts that for some reason people tend to do far too small let's look at all the little details now make sure we've got everything in place before we put any eyelashes on because once you've drawn the eyelashes you can't adjust any of the stuff that's underneath now, obviously, I've still got the eyelashes to put in, but um, there's a lot more shading to be done within the eye. So we did the iris, but the eye itself is an orb and you always want to put a little bit of shading each side. So if we go back to these sort of um, scruffy practice pieces that I'm doing, you've got the eyeball there. You're going to have some shading each side of that because it's circular and there's a tendency for beginners to paint this completely flat but you will need to get some shading on that otherwise the eye isn't going to look curved and on this one as well we have quite a lot of shading just in this inner corner just where it's in shadow from the nose or whatever so there's only you know a small amount of it that is pure white we've also got some tiny veins and we've got this piece here of course which is the tear duct and we're going to get all of that in place before we put these eyelashes on otherwise we won't be able to adjust later on and we would smudge them as we were going in to the edges of the eye so starting to get this little tear duct in and it is fairly dark and you can see sort of the edges of little folds of skin and then i'm going to be looking at doing some shading along the, uh, the side of the eye here there's already you know it's already smudged in a bit where i've been sort of leaning on it or where i've been smudging other things so there's already a bit of color to it there and i want to get a bit more around the edge of the eye here just take a little bit of a finer pencil in there you know if you only have one type of pencil and you can't sort of swap around you don't have any blending tools it really doesn't matter you know it's still good practice just do your best with it and you can always get better tools later on and i'm just going to again smudge this in i'm going to use my brush this time so i get some real softness to it 
like this. If you ever go too far with the smudging and things are looking too dark, you can of course go back into it and take an eraser there. I'm getting a little bit of smudging down this end. You see how you can just almost use the brush itself. It's a bit like when you're working with charcoal and your fingers get dirty, you can start to paint almost with your fingers. You can do the same in this case here if you look at this little torsion that's got some stuff on already so I can almost use that to almost draw with. So I'm getting that in there and just getting a hint around that side and this will start to make the eye look again more realistic. I need to sharpen up that edge there which I'm going to do. I'm going to go in with my 2B actually and get a little bit of a sharper edge on that. Don't overdo the sharpness here though. You still want it to look natural. It's not a single thin line. It's just some colour or shadow, shall we say, at the edge of the eye there. And I'm going to come around like this. I just want to sharpen up the edge there where the eyeball stops. I'm also going to get just, there's one or two little veins in here, which I can get with a very fine point of my pencil. If, as you've been working, your pencil has lost its point, you will want to just resharpen your pencil. So finally, let's look at the eyelashes. And this is somewhere that people tend to go very wrong indeed. There's actually a difference between the way the lashes on the top lid grow to how the lashes underneath the eye grow. Let me show you how to do it. It's going to just put the final touches on that very realistic eye that we are creating. So the final thing we need to do is add eyelashes. And you'll see that I've gone round and I've just um, tightened up a few things, I've made the eye a bit blacker, I've put in some fine lines. I mean, to go to photorealism, you could almost go on forever. So if you have a look at the eyelashes here, some of these are actually light on dark. You'd have to use a white pencil or some kind of white medium on top of this, um, or a very, very fine eraser to take those lines out. There are other ways of doing it as well. You could use embossing which would, um, if we'd done it at the beginning, have preserved some little white hairs. But we're not going for photorealism here, we're just going for a very realistic eye. So it's a matter of a personal preference how far you want to go into this vision of reality. Personally, I am always uh, more inclined to go into painting than to spend ages on realistic drawings. But if that's your thing, there are lots of other photorealism methods that you could explore as well. Let me know, of course, in the comments if you want me to do a video on more uh, photorealistic drawing. But I mean, this one is, uh, is pretty close to realism, I think. We want to do the eyelashes next. Now, the mistake that people make with eyelashes, to go back to the eye that we drew wrongly to start with, is they take them in a straight line and they take them straight out like this so straight out i mean it's very clockwork orange and um it's very unrealistic now what actually happens with the eyelashes is they are different from the top lid to the bottom so on the top they almost come from underneath so if we go back to this eye that we drew here the lashes at the top curl outwards and they almost come from underneath so they dip down slightly before they come up and again you want to do them in the direction that they're growing now on the bottom lid, they do something entirely different. They come outwards and downwards, but there's a sort of a gap. So on the top lid, you can't see exactly where they're coming from, you know, the exact part of the root. But on the bottom lid, you can. So that's how we're going to do them. They're fairly short, these lashes, um, which leads me to suspect this might be a man. But um, again, it's rather androgynous, this picture. It could be either, you know. Make of it what you will. So again, I'm going to go, I think, to my 4B pencil. And just before I put them in, I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Now, a few of these on the top lid, having said you can't see where they're coming from, a few of them you can, but most of them are coming sort of from underneath the lid like this. And this is why you need to have everything else finished first. You need to be quite confident with these strokes and just to do them quickly. Don't try and sort of overly you know do them slowly because you won't get that natural feeling of hair growing if you do that and they don't come up very far on this person so we're going to keep putting them in like so they can barely be seen here on this dark part of the eye just a little bit perhaps where some of them come from slightly higher up i'm going to put them in i'll put a few more in in a moment as they come down here they start to grow in the other direction so that's something to be aware of as well they sort of change it's because of the perspective which you're viewing it at they change as they go around and the ones in the bottom here are almost longer than the ones in the top and we're going to come down like this you'll notice as well that i did take my eraser and sort of take out some 
highlights here and there. It may be a little bit bright white here. There's almost a secondary sort of line coming around the middle there that I can kind of get just with the mark that's on here. As I said, it depends how far you want to go with these things and how far you take the idea of realism. So I'm going to carry on now and put the rest of these lashes on, always looking back at my photograph. So that's the rest of the eyelashes and I'm quite happy with the result today. It's really, really hard to assess it. So uh, if you have a go at this, put it aside when you're finished and then bring it out. Perhaps show your friends or family members and um, I think you'll be very, very happy with the results. So do let me know in the comments if you found this video useful, if there were any particular things that have helped you and if you're going to have a go at this tutorial. And if you'd like to follow along with the step-by-step -step drawing that I do for every single one of my own paintings, you'll find all of that over on Patreon. I'll put the link in the video description. Whilst you're in that video description, don't forget to grab one of my free downloadable PDFs. That will put you on my mailing list. And later on this year, later on in 2021, I'm actually going to be launching a complete beginner's drawing course. Meantime, if you're still having trouble with your drawing, I've got a great video that tells you the 10 most common mistakes that I've seen in 20 years of teaching drawing to students. You can watch that video right now.